Hi, over the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to write some Python and Spark that will load a external CSV file of 28 million rows into a fabric lake house. It will then clean it up and write it to a table. Finally, we'll write some SQL to analyze it and uh, a quick Power BI report. Python is my favorite way of analyzing data in Fabric. What I hope to show, even if you don't know Python, is that the Python code that you can see here is, and that we're going to write the stuff in the uh, gray rectangles, is quite short, straightforward, and simple. And I will explain every line of it so that you get the gist of it. So even if you don't know Python, I hope that this will be useful for you, and maybe that it might kind of spur you to uh, learn a bit of Python as well. So with that said, the one thing before we get started is that if you want to follow along, and I hope that you do, the data file, uh, the external data file that I'm using, and also a copy of the Python code is in links to that in the description below. So with that said, let's get started. This tutorial uses a public data set. It's from the UK government, from uh, the land registry, and it has a row for every sale in England since 1995. We're going to look at this single file here that's got uh, 28 million rows for gig. And if we click on it, we can download it. I've, I've already done that, and here it is in my downloads. And in a minute, we're just going to upload it into the files area of a Fabric workspace. Here I am in Fabric. I've got an empty workspace. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a lake house. And I'll call that lake house property. And let's create it. Now let's load that file into the files area of our lake space. I'm going to click on files area, I'm going to upload the files and the file that I'm going to upload from my downloads folder on my local machine is this PP complete let's upload. After a few minutes our file appears in the files area that's the area for unstructured data in our lake house. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open a Python notebook. I'll open a new notebook. This is where we're going to write our Python code to transform it into a table. A notebook is a combination of markdown description comments, executable code and results. Let's just add a markdown cell, a comment cell, that explains what we're going to do. So I've got some text here, I'll put it in, and that's our cell, and I will come along and move it to the top. Let's load our data. The easiest way to get started is to do this. I'll go to my file, I'll right click, and I'll say load data, we're going to load it as a Spark data frame. Spark is an engine for large scale data analytics and Python uses that. It's written this code for us. I will run the code. While it's running, let me explain what happens. Spark is a reference to a live Spark pool that's going to be available to us within seconds. We're going to read uh, a file. The format is CSV. It's guessed that the, uh, the CSV file has headers, and this is the name of the file. Notice that it's come back with the data. We can see the first uh, few rows and few columns. Uh, what we might notice is actually that uh, this data does not have any column headers. That first row there is actually a data row. Let's tweak this code segment. This file does not have any column headers, so I'll set that to false rather than true. And maybe I just want to see the first couple of rows so I can limit it to two rows. I'll move that out of the way, move that out of the way, and I'll rerun. And there we can see we've got a better picture. We've got our first two rows of data, and we can see uh, we've got two sales. This is sales of property. We've got the first sale was for 70,000 in uh, postcode MK15, Milton Keynes, I think, and a lot of address information, including the street and so on. 
Notice as well that we get the, the date of the sale, this first row, the sale was on the 7th of July 1995. Now let's inspect our data set a bit more. I will add a code cell. In that code cell I'll write two lines of code. The first one uses the count method on this data frame to tell us the number of rows and the print schema will just tell us a bit about the column names. And there we go. We can see we've got 16 columns named underscore C0 through C15. Uh, at the moment they're all strings. Once we've had a look at the results we can actually hide the output of the cell for the moment. Let's do that. We're going to add another code cell and in this code cell we're going to just do some boilerplate code. Basically, we're setting some spark configuration settings. That's when it writes a file, writes a table in a minute, it will write it in an optimized way to improve the performance of Power BI. You don't need to worry about this too much. It's always going to be the same. So let's just run that. This data set is not yet perfect, but if it was, we could take it straight away and write it as a table. Let's just do that. I'll add a code cell and I'll add these few lines of code. The first is that we're just going to call our table price paid original. Then we're going to take our data frame, we're going to write it uh, in this delta format, this is a parquet delta format, the standard format, and we're going to give it this particular name in the tables area, price paid original, and then we just uh, print out that we've actually finished. Let's do that. That's taken a minute and 20 seconds to complete. I paused the recording while it did that. Now let's have a look at that uh, table in our lake house. If I click on that, I can see the, the 16 columns. And if I go back to my lake house, my property lake house, and I click on here, I'll be able to see the uh, some of the rows of the data. And here it is. Our data isn't perfect, as we said, so let's go back to the notebook and we'll do some operations to clean it up. I'll add another code cell. And here I'm going to just drop or delete the final six columns. We've got the postcode information earlier on and these columns are all geographic information. Uh, it's just better to look that data up on the postcode. So let's run that and we can see we've got our 10 columns and uh, two rows there, that's great. As you can see, the original CSV file didn't have any column names, so we've got those columns underscore C0 through C9 at the moment. So what we need to do is just give them useful names. Um, C0 is actually the transaction ID, uh, C9 is the street, and so on. So I'm just going to use this with column renamed um, method on the, on the data frame to rename those. And there we go, we can see that we've got some nice column names. One thing that we've got to do next is if we have a look at other column types is that transaction date and price are strings. Everything is a string, but transaction date, we need to be a date time and price, we need to be an integer, whole number of pounds of the price. Let's do that next. Let's add a new code cell and we'll run this particular code we're using the with column method of, of the data frame and we're just going to use that to force the price column to be an integer a whole number and the transaction column uh, to be a date. Let's run that. And that's great. We've got our integer price and our date. The next thing I'm going to do is to run this code. And what this does is add a new column called transaction year, which is the year of the transaction date. The reason I want to do that is later on I want a Power BI report where I can show the number of sales, the total price against transaction year. And here is our result. We've got this new column transaction year and uh, the value for those, both those 1995 because our transaction date for both of those is in that year. Now our data frame is clean and we can just write it to a table in exactly the same way as we did the original. I'm calling this one price paid clean, but otherwise it's exactly the same. And we've completed in just over a minute. Let's have a look at the table. I just paused the recording while I went back into the Lake House Explorer and uh, clicked on my price paid clean table and we can see 
here's our table looking good a quick reminder that these are actually parquet files if I click on the table and click on view files we can see the parquet files underneath what we're going to do now is go from the lake house view to the SQL endpoint view and there we can see our data as a table we can also click on my queries and I'm going to create a new query I'm going to create this query and run it this will give us a number of sales and the total market value of those sales for each year finally let's build ourselves a Power BI report before we do that we don't actually need to see the uh, the original table in our Power BI uh, default data set so we can remove it let's go to our model data set we see our price pay clean data set let's add a new measure the let's call it the number of sales and we're going to make it equal to the count rows of our price paid clean table each row is a sale and therefore we can say that and there we have our measure there let's go along and let's just create a new report on that report let's expand our table there let's show our sales and we'll look at it by our transaction year that's the derived field that we got there so there we are we've got our sales by year let's save that and we're done I hope that this video has been useful to you if you do want to follow along and reproduce it there's two things that you need and the links to both of those are in the description the first of all is the data set the public data set land register data set which is at this page here and if you want to recreate my code I put it on a github website again the link is there next time we will be loading data into fabric using sql so i look forward to seeing you then goodbye